Okay, John DeVoe, thank you so much for, for hopping on with me and, and having this conversation. So obviously, uh, we're meeting to talk about this new main grassroots caucus that uh, you've created alongside. Initially, it was 24 others. Um, it's been a month, though. Has there been progress in the numbers, or, or is it still at that core of 25? No, it's actually, uh, our, our numbers are actually growing daily. Um, and it's been quite exciting. Uh, the, one of the biggest things that we've been hearing from a lot of the new members and new people is that they are happy that there's a group of uh, like-minded conservatives um, out there. Uh, our website is getting uh, a number of, quite a number of hits because we've got a lot of information that some of the other websites don't have. Uh, so there is a, there's a, there's a really, it's kind of exciting. It, it, there's there's kind of a lot of uh, uh, excitement around in, in the Re Republican Party and especially in the grassroots that really have felt their their voices haven't been heard. So this group was created um, right after the main GOP voted against the center of Senator Susan Collins is a vote of 41 to 19. There was one of the posts that I was reading on your website. I'm not sure if you were the author behind it, um, but it, that the article called it uh, that vote, the straw that broke the camel's back. Was this something that had been discussed prior to that vote or was it really just about this vote uh, that ultimately pushed the group to be created? No, um, this group is actually, we've been talking for a while now, a bunch of, um, a bunch of, again, like-minded conservatives who feel that just things hadn't been going in the, the, the proper or right way um, and, and didn't give the voices as needed to the, uh, to the people. So one of the things that we did is we, we've been talking for about six months um, or longer actually before this. And we've, uh, sorry, no, John. Um, wait getting ready to take my son to school, so sorry about that. Oh, no uh, worries. So we've, we've been talking and, and we were, you know, finding it challenging to just kind of sit by and, and not really say a whole lot. I, on the other hand, I, I say my mind a lot. Yeah. Um, and what happens is that you kind of get silenced. And, and that's what the grassroots people really feel that has been going on. Um, so what happened was, is that really was kind of the final thing. It was like, okay, do we really want to get going in this or do we, we kind of just want to stay in the, in the shadows? And when that happened, that really, really set it over. So you say six months ago is when these discussions started happening, just so I can develop a timeline here. Is that November, the presidential election? No, no, I wouldn't go that far back. Maybe my numbers are wrong. I would think so after, around, after the election. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this didn't really have anything to do with the election. Um, the outcome was the outcome. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that um, we, nobody, well, a lot of us weren't happy with the outcome, but it happened. Um, we're not going to go riot and burn things down. It's just, you know, we're going to continue on with our lives. Um, but what we were finding was that within our party, we were having a lot of, you know, things that we weren't really comfortable with. So that's where this party came from. And one of the things that really got us again was the, the vote cast by uh, Senator Collins. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a veteran, 100% um, disabled. And one of the things that I have to say right off the bat is Senator Collins has done a number of wonderful and great things in this state for our veterans and for our county, Arusha County. Um, but it's not something that we can just ignore. Um, in the military, again, we have counseling statements, and I'm sure in any profession, you get uh, rated on good, bad, and the ugly. Well, this was kind of our rating saying, you know, we, we don't agree with what you did, and we want you to know that we don't agree with it. So that's why Arusha County um, censored her. The state at the time was talking about censor, it was supposed to be written by the state. The censure itself was supposed to be written by the state. And we were all fine with that. And then it didn't happen. And it so didn't happen. To, I'm sorry. 
just to backtrack here for people who weren't um, maybe aware of this censure. So this was over her vote um, again to impeach Donald Trump in the second impeachment trial for inciting violence at the Capitol on January 6th. So what, what about that vote uh, were you and many of your fellow other main GOP members so against um, in that you ultimately attempted to censure Senator Collins? Sure. So well, let me put it to you like this. The entire state committee, executive committee and leadership were on a Zoom call with the senator prior to this vote of impeachment or, or, or not. They represented every district in the state of Maine, every county, every town, as their elected officials to the state Republican Party. Every one of them told the senator that they did not approve of this message. She went ahead and made a decision on her own based on that. And while you, you know, we believe in free speech and things like that, she's a representative. She represents the state of Maine and the Republican Party. And as a representative, the belief is, is that you listen to your constituents. And when the entire Republican Party tells you that they do not approve of this, you just went against the entire state of Maine Republican Party. So I'm, I'm really be beating a dead horse here, but it, ultimately you and many of your fellow other Republicans in Maine strongly believe that he shouldn't have been impeached for his actions uh, leading up to January 6th. No, that's a correct statement. Yeah. And why do you feel so strongly about that position? Well, I mean, let's look at the facts come to find, you know, let's let's look at the facts that were found after the uh, the when they tried to impeach him they found that a number of the facts that were supposedly given were false. Um, and that's realistically the reason why. Like what? Well, how did the Capitol Police officer die? Was it due to blunt force as was suggested? Or did he die of natural causes? Okay. These are, fa these are facts that have been proven. All right. And, okay. and, and this, these are the things that were, were you know, we're sitting here saying, you didn't give the, you didn't give the proper time. The other thing is the Constitution alone. Was the, who was the president at the time of the impeachment trial? Joe Biden. Yeah. Correct. The. But not at the time that he was impeached. No, actually, he was. When he wasn't the House first. He, he wasn't impeached while he was the president. Um, okay, I mean, at this point, that the censure didn't pass, and I do want to move on and just pick your brain about other parts of this new main grassroots Republican caucus so that people know, you know, what it is that you stand for. And, and one of the things that we discussed on the phone that um, was I found interesting, and I think a lot of other people would be interested in, is this idea that it's it's not a fracture from the Republican Party, is what you say. So... So could you elaborate more on that? Sure, and, and again, I, I, would, I would liken it to the, um, the Freedom Caucus within the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, they formed this, this Freedom Caucus, um, but I'm pretty, and, and they're still Republicans within the Republican Party. They haven't left the party. They haven't formed their own uh, quasi-Republican party um, or anything along those lines. They're still Republicans. It's just they formed a caucus of like-minded people that talk and vote in a, in a manner that they believe in. Um, and they oppose things that they don't believe in while they're within the party. Um, I'm still a duly elected uh, county chair for the Aroostra County Republicans. That hasn't changed. I just happen to also chair this, this uh, grassroots caucus. Um, and... I mean, it's not like it gets an extra vote. It's not like it has any special privileges. It's just a group of like-minded people who, who decided that, you know what, we want, we want to work together. 
within the party. We want to unify the party by bringing that grassroots voter, those disenfranchised, and even those those who may be, you know, uh, right leaning left people who who have some of the same values who say, you know what, he's right in that that aspect. I mean, we don't agree a hundred percent of the time. Um, my wife and I don't agree a hundred percent of the time. But on certain things, I think we really need to we really need to sit down and have an open conversation. And and it's not happening in a lot of it. It's interesting that you say the goal of this is actually to bring more unity to the party. How how do you see that playing out through the caucus? Yep. So, you know, we don't we don't look at things as um, forced allegiances. We believe in you know open communication by conservatives or Republicans or or people who might be more left leaning Republicans. We all have to sit down and talk and, and understand that that 100% is an unattainable goal. We have to look at working together, communicating, you know, uh, with the, the party and the caucus. Um, I believe that if we did that, it would bolster the roles, the voter roles, um, provide a path for long-term planning. Um, it would, you know, it would enhance our voter turnout, which, you know, is, is something that we really need. Um, and, and really bring back that conservative voice that the country, it, as you had mentioned in our, our discussion on the phone, that the country is scheming for um, by aligning the Republican base and the establishment into, you know, a, a cohesive uh, team again. But it can't happen without that conversation. That's interesting. You say you're you're looking to pull in those who might be feeling disenfranchised, and ultimately it might grow the main mm -hmm. Republican Party. Yeah, because right now there's a large population of the Republican uh, Party that has left it. There's also a large, well, almost a third, I guess, if you were to look at the numbers, a third of the third of people, the voters are unenrolled. And they're unenrolled because they're tired of the two-party system not listening to them. And this is where it's important, not only for you know Republicans but for Democrats, to really speak to these people and say we, we do we do hear you. There is a group that that's listening, and we want to help. And and how do we how do we do it? And the only way we do it is by listening to the voters. That's the way our founders had this set up. It's not a we're not a government that's supposed to be uh, dictated to by the, 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 the people in politics. It's by the people on the ground. It's you and it's me and it's our friends that elect these representatives to speak on our behalf. Not as, you know, duke and duchesses in a monarchy, but as representatives of the voters. What it does do is you, you will plan to work with legislators on bills and initiatives uh, and essentially generate more of a voice for people uh, with conservatives with opinions that stray from the traditional main GOP opinion. So, so that's uh, on your website what I see. One of the things you'll be doing, working with legislators on bills and initiatives. Uh, one area that I saw that the group plans or hopes to work in is this idea of creating uh, strengthening voter laws. Beyond that, I mean, what, what are the goals? What are the key issues that um, the main grassroots Republican caucus plans to tackle working with legislators? Well, I mean, my gosh, that list, uh, I don't know if we have enough time for that list, but I mean, if you were to look at the three basic things that, you know, our founders uh, really focused on when they created the constitution and, and, uh, you know, this experiment of, of the United States is, is it was basically centered around three things, family, faith, and freedom. Okay, our freedoms are protected by, as one person put on, or uh, uh, challenged me when I was on a, a radio interview the other day, they stated that the Constitution is, and Bill of Rights aren't written on stone, which they're correct. They're written on paper, and they're written on paper to tell the government what they, what they cannot take away. So our Bill of Rights, there are protections of our inherent rights that are God-given. So those are our freedoms, our family and our faith, okay? Why did, 
why did 400 years ago the pilgrims land at Plymouth Rock or Plymouth? Well, they were fleeing three things, religious persecution, tyrannical government and disease. Fast forward 400 years, what do we have? Some people say we have a tyrannical government, religious persecution and COVID, mm -hmm. a disease. But we have nowhere else to go now. So now we have to stand and fight and, and you know, stand for those freedoms, our family faith and our, and, and our family. And, and th that's realistically what we look at. So apply that to any of the bills that are coming up that are trying to take uh, or, or lessen those. We're going to be working with legislators on those. Okay. I mean, that is, that is pretty broad. Any, maybe just personally, even if you're not speaking on behalf of the entire caucus, any specific issue that, that you're looking at that the legislature is going to tackle in the next year that you plan to be uh, very vocal on? Well, definitely, you know, we're definitely against the mandates. All right. There, so mm -hmm. We believe that there's been a, you know, huge attack on our constitutional freedoms with these ma extended mandates. And the problem is, it's trying to get, an, you know, legal, uh, representation to take this kind of stuff on uh, because everybody's going to want big money up front because it's, it's a huge challenge. Um, and realistically, you know, I was in the 129th when we signed that uh, legislation giving her the powers. And we really, at the time, were doing it out of not really understanding what was going on and trying to do the best that we could for the for our, our constituents at the time. We did not expect this to go on for however long it's gone on now, months and months. I mean, it's been over a year. Um, knowing, you know, having the foresight to see what this turned into, I definitely would have voted for this. So I would have been more of a, every 30 days we come back, we determine whether or not we need to extend it as a legislature, and, and then we give the authority. It definitely would not have happened this way. And I think a lot of legislators would be, feel the same way in this aspect. Um, we see the challenges. We saw that, you know, I think it was just the other day, um, the Democrats voted every piece of legislation down that would have regulated these mandates, this emergency power. And I guess my question to the governor would be right now is, is can she give an actual time or date when it was outside of local control because I've spoke with a number of the emergency management directors within the state and they have told me that this was never outside of local control and if that's the case then she's violated the um, violated the or her mandates actually violate her, her authority because if you read 741, Title 37B, Section 741, it's outside of local control. Okay, so so mandates are a big one, and as you know, that they're being slowly lifted. Just yesterday, mm -hmm. the the mandate on on the outdoor masks. Um, you'll certainly be looking forward at countless other issues this year. And how about looking forward even further? 2022, there is a gubernatorial race, um, as well as other you know, races. Is the caucus planning to get involved in, in campaigns? Could you see the caucus backing a different candidate than, than the main GOP? Um, how, what does that look like? Well, here's the thing. The, the caucus, the party, all of that, shouldn't influence any primary it should be let's let's let the people choose mm. who that candidate is going to be um we're you know we're not we're not our voting system is so set up so that the people choose who our candidate is we don't establish we don't coronate a king we let the people establish who they want to represent the party so we, as a caucus, will 
post all information of every candidate that's coming up. All right, on the Republican side. I mean, I'm not gonna promote, yeah. promote, promote a Democrat, no, no offense. Um, I don't think they would do the same thing. Uh, right. So, but you know, like right now, if you go to our website, Mike Heath is, is declared. He's on our website because he's declared and provided information to us that he wanted. Same, same request has gone out to, uh, I believe it was Martin uh, Bashan, who's declared. Uh, you know, uh, we heard rumblings that Governor LePage is going to be running. And when he declares, and, and we, at, we hope that he would send us a, a photo and, and a, a brief bio as well, because we want to make sure that the public, the grassroots, the voters all have the information of every candidate that we have for the Republican Party and can make an educated decision on what they believe in. So it's this not is, for us. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna it's say this is <laughs> no it's it's not it's not our place to dictate who's gonna be the person. That's really what I needed to say. And this is where you split in a sense from the main GOP, which is looking to financially back potentially once he announces Governor Paula Page, former Governor Paula Page as the head of the primaries. That was an area that the caucus disagrees with, with that action by the main GOP? Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. We definitely disagree with the fact that the rule 11 was waived. Um, and, and, and again, it goes back to like I just said a few minutes or just, just a minute ago, is that we feel that that, um, we feel that that was something that just doesn't, it, it feels unfair. Um, and, and the reason for that is, is, is it's kind of, they waived a rule before they broke a rule. Um, you know, and, and it's not, you know, a rule that's set, you know, that, that couldn't have been done, but the, because there was two other people that had already declared, whether the party likes them or not, they have to be fair about elections. Um, you know, so, so now there's a candidate that has a distinct advantage because of the party support, and, as you said, finances and things like that. Well, how is that a fair, um, how is that a fair uh, primary coming up now? Mm. When you've got the Republican machine behind you with all this money and, and resources. Question is just I'll, I'll put it to you. Anything we didn't cover that you think is important? Any misconceptions about this caucus that you want to clear up? Uh, I mean, I want to definitely say that you know we're not the only state that's doing this. Right now, there's a movement. There's 14 other states that are doing similar um, similar things, forming caucuses and and are discussing it. One of our members that's on the, the uh, caucus has actually uh, been invited to be on the national. Uh, national group um so these are things that you know they might want us you know it might want to be focused on on this caucus in maine that you know oh we, these guys are instigators and and they're trying to burn down the republican party well if we did that we would just form another one it, it doesn't make sense um we're actually trying to strengthen the party that we all love um from within the party um so you know that's one of the biggest things um Let's look at South Carolina, um, Alaska, Louisiana, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, um, number of states, uh, New Jersey, uh, what was another one? Uh, God, I can't even read my own notes. Virginia, Alabama, um, you know, these are all states that are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not unique. And I think the Republican party itself needs to realize that it's it's time for not necessarily a rebranding, but we need to start looking within and how, to, how it is that we can we can strengthen our party and, and, and stop this rift. And the only way to do that is is like anything else, you have to be able to have open communications and, and dialogue, or or it's just going to continue. You, if you ignore, um, you're doomed for failure. Are there hard feelings towards the leaders, the main GOP? Oh, from from me, from from us, no. There, okay. I, I believe that 
I wouldn't say it's hard feelings more is more than um, a true misunderstanding of what the message was. And a lot of that is because there was no communication. When we announced it was crickets. And I think that's one of the biggest problems is that, you know, why wouldn't you want to talk to a group of people that seem dissatisfied with what's going on? It just doesn't make any, any sense to me. As a leader, the first thing I would do is sit these people down and say, what's going on? And that hasn't happened. No, it hasn't. John, thank you so much. Um, it's been a really interesting conversation and I learned a lot and I certainly, I hope others will uh, once this airs. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And, you know, be more than willing to answer more questions as time goes along.